So what do Star Wars, Tim Burton's Batman, a weird movie called The Castle, The Pillow Book, and um, 12 Monkeys have to do with one another? <laughs> These are a few of my favorite things. You know, you know like Mary Poppins. Hey, good morning, lovely people of the planet. This is Jeff O. This is the Morning Ride Pedal Power Podcast, where we have discussions about what it means to be a creative person, an artistic person, and a human being. Now, I don't know anything. I'm just a dude on a bicycle. Hey, good morning. Working to evolve as a filmmaker, as a writer, poet, and as a human being myself, so, uh, Thanks for letting me ride along with you this morning. I really appreciate it. They're about to power wash this tunnel. <laughs> yeah, they're gonna be putting up a mural there. I think it's brilliant. They've got all of these wonderful gallery spaces. As long as they don't paint the wall, man. I'm getting used to the little red bastard, the new handlebars, new stem. It's not right, but it's getting there. So one of the things that I'm trying to do, folks, in the last couple of... Uh-oh, Molly's texting me. I'll have to get back with her. Looks like we've got dates. She's got an artistic project going on in San Francisco in January that I'm stoked for her about. She got some good news. Found an artist to collaborate with. She's already collaborating with one of her best friends who drew the, uh, the artwork for this project. Man, I'll have to talk with her about it to talk to you about it because I don't want to, it's her thing. She should talk about it. No, so I've been trying to focus the content on this channel into more of the content around how I'm really working. I've had a, a great professional career and I'm still a professional, don't get me wrong. But uh, like I was saying last week in the podcast, how I made a decision when we moved to Idaho to not continue with the career as I was doing. I was managing people, I was running programs, I was in charge of a lot of things, which meant that I was, I had become a generalist again. I was no longer programming websites, I was no longer doing the video work, I wasn't doing a lot of the, uh, the design work for our HTML email campaigns for fundraising and stuff. I was fortunate enough to work with brilliant people who could do all of that way better than I could. So the idea was when I moved to Idaho, was first to get a job at all, <laughs> of course, but I was able to get right into a job, a technical writing job that had a little bit of video work to it and then evolve into more video and photography with that just as the needs of the organization have changed. And so I was talking about that last week and it really hit me that this is kind of the, the reason or the big story. It's kind of my ride is how I'm kind of evolving as a, uh, as a creative professional and as an artist and making that decision when we moved here to Idaho to work toward being a specialist again and get out of the strategic managerial type roles so much. I thought that dude was gonna pass me, but I guess he's gonna hang out, so that's cool. And so I'm trying to focus the content there. So if this is your thing, if you are looking to make a big life change, if you're wanting to do more creative work in your life, if you're wanting to figure out how do I be an artist, how do I have a day job and be an artist, which is where I'm gonna be for the next 10 years or so, um, then thanks for joining in the discussion. It really, really helps me for you to be here. I love hearing from you so much when you reach out via email or out on the socials. Hey, good morning on your left. You can find us on uh, Instagram and Twitter at Morning Ride Pod. <laughs> I know it's so silly. I hate saying it every time, but hopefully it's hopefully it's memorable. It's better than Grinch Dufa Design. God, that was a ridiculous business decision to have a name that no one could spell. We had a friend that said, "Yeah, it looks like you dropped your coffee cup on the keyboard, and whatever letters <laughs> fell out is how you named your company." If you're naming a company, name it something simple that people can say and they, they can get too easy. So, 
Morning Ride Pedal, morningridepodcast.com for the website. I'll put extra notes out there, and of course you can get the videos the day after audio comes out. Good morning on your left here. So, I was about to say I had a real breakthrough with the Poco a Poco film project a couple nights ago, but uh, it was really Jennifer had a breakthrough with it. I consider her a producing partner on that project. Um, I don't know how that. Hey, good morning. I don't know how that's going to fall out legally and on screen and such, but uh, bottom line is, she is elemental in the, the making of this our first feature film together and I'm so grateful to have a partner who I trust artistically and who thinks differently from me so it's, a, it's perfect it's a perfect combination as long as she puts up with me and I'm not taking more energy from the uh, system than I am also giving back <laughs> that is a tough thing about being a human being and being a creative and being in a relationship is that your partner takes a hit too, man. So one of the things that I'm doing right now in the Poco a Poco project is I'm starting to collect reference materials because uh, I plan on directing the film. I don't really want to direct it so much as facilitate the shooting of the film. I know, I, I think that's fear, isn't it, probably? But uh, basically I've been collecting reference materials and thinking about some of the films that we've really loved along the way and uh, so that list at the beginning the intro was uh it's basically <laughs> hey good morning it's basically the films that have had a huge impact on me or artistically inspired me obviously i think anyone that was a young person in the 70s seeing star wars i mean it's just it was this whole new universe after uh, kubrick's 2010, you know, he really redefined what science fiction movies that take place in other places, he really redefined what that could look like. And I think Lucas really, really took that same approach and built out that beautiful world that inspired me so much as a kid. I love the stories. I think even then, though, the, the dialogue, I know everyone has to say that. I'm not going to talk about the dialogue. The point is, I was inspired by that story early on. I think the first film I saw, though, was The Jungle Book, which, of course, that was awesome. Seeing about Mowgli and his journey, which is really what that story is all about. Hey, good morning. On your left here. And then Tim Burton made Batman with Michael Keaton, Kim Basinger, Jack Nicholson as the Joker. And that came out in what, 88 or 89, something like that. I remember I was in high school. My good friend of mine, his name is also Jeff. We watched it, no, it, it was 89 because we were, we were in college together over at John Brown University in Salem Springs, Arkansas. And uh, man, that film. It was the first like highly stylized film. It didn't look like other films. And so that was really impressive to me, just visually. It was like, wow, this just doesn't look like other films. And uh, I understood like for the first time, it's like, oh, wow, this is like, he's like, Tim Burton is like, he's a filmmaker, you know? He's not just a director. He's not just the writer. He's, he's the guy that invented the whole thing. So that was really cool to see that and kind of have that realization. Then in college at uh, Arkansas Tech University, <laughs> Arkansas Polytechnic University, isn't that crazy? It's one of the first polytechnical agricultural schools in the country, which I think is kind of interesting. But I saw that film and it's like, you know what? That's cool. Like you can have a specific kind of voice in film. And I was really dumb. I mean, I grew up in Arkansas where we didn't talk about film. We didn't see films. We banned more films than we actually saw, I think. Hey, good morning on your left here.
I've been in poetry classes. I had a great professor, Dr. Ritchie, at Tech. And Wait, we want to that was awfully fun. He introduced me to a film called The Castle. It's, uh, uh, it's based on a Kafka story, obviously, The Castle. And uh, Jeremy Irons played that role. And I believe the whole film was black and white. I'm remembering it that way. I haven't seen it in years. And that was my first like real indie film. And then he introduced me to one called The Forbidden Zone by Richard Elfman, who I believe is Danny Elfman's older brother. And they may have been in Oingo Boingo together. I really, I honestly don't know. But I do know that, um, I know they're brothers. <laughs> and it is crazy. It's basically a rock musical made with cardboard sets. And, you know, it takes place in this other dimension called the Forbidden Zone. It is a freaking fantastic indie film. It was like the first full on, like, you know, we made this film for $32 kind of film I saw. And then, of course, Clerks and some of those others came out uh, around that time. And, uh, and then The Pillow Book. I was introduced to that, Peter Greenaway, and he was a classically trained artist, like fine artist, painter, and then went into film. And so the framing and composition of his shots really, really inspired me because it's like, oh my gosh, this is like next level. And it definitely is next level, and it's definitely super expensive to shoot a film like that. So we're gonna to try to do something very similar to that, but try to find creative solutions so that we're not having to uh, spend as much money as probably a, a Greenaway film costs. Uh, for Poco a Poco, I mean. It's one of the inspiration films, one of the reference films. So anyway, these are some of the films. Oh, and then 12 Monkeys, which led me to La Jete, which is a Chris Marker film. It's like a 20 minute short. It's all still images. And then there's like one shot that's like five seconds of a moving image of a woman blinking. But he tells the story, it's about time travel and memory. Yes, we have been in a construction zone for about three years now. It is super, super frustrating. The building shakes half the time. Anyway, I just wanted to share with you some of the, some of the films that kind of got me interested in filmmaking in the beginning. And, or inspired me in the beginning is like, oh wow, there's like, what is this art form all about? And uh, that was kind of where I got my start with that. And then it was kind of a follow on uh, Monday where I was talking about um, kind of the beginning of how I got into filmmaking, which was through poetry, which we just, we talked about that on Monday, so we won't get into that today. So what are some of the, uh, what are some of the artifacts of your ride? Whatever your ride is, what are some of the artifacts that inspired you to get into whatever your ride is? Um, you know, like with bicycling too. I remember uh, seeing other bicycles and thinking, wow, that looks like a cool bicycle, or that looks like a cool handlebar, or that looks like a cool <clears throat> stem, or wow, I bet those brakes work really well because of the way they're designed. And uh, so that's kind of how I got into bicycling. So what, what is your ride? What are some of the artifacts of your ride, of your memory that like inspired you to do a thing or inspired you to get into a thing? What was it? Is, are, and do those still hold true for you? Like all of these films, I still love them. Obviously, I have a different regard for Star Wars now. Um, the fantasy aspect of it and storytelling aspect of it, absolutely. There's just hardly any other story that has captivated so many people, so specific, a specific story that has captivated so many people. I love that. Um, the Pillow Book, man, it's a tough one to see because like every time I see it, it's like, oh my gosh, it's just as, as I get older and knowing where Greenaway was in his life as he was making that film, it's just tough to watch. It's a tough film. Um, so what are some of the, the artifacts of your past that led you into your ride, your creative work, your life work, um, your career work? Um, what are those things that inspired you? Do they still hold true? Um, or were they just kind of stepping stones to a thing? I think it's important for us to remember these things. And uh, going through the writing of this first um, screenplay and the first like storyline and treatment for the film, um, you know, I'm just remembering so many, like so much of the music and uh, movies that have inspired my life and my ride to this point to where like, you know, at 44, it's like, okay, I'm going to make a movie. Um, <laughs> I have no idea why I even decided that. Uh, anyway, folks, thank you for letting me be a small part of your ride this morning. I really appreciate it. Uh, it means a lot that we get to ride together. Um, you know, it's the only ride we get 
Thanks for letting me be a part of it. Hope that you have a fantastic weekend, and uh, I'm excited to ride with you on Monday. Unless, of course, you want to see the deer that I wasn't recording yet uh, that I got on my iPhone. You can check that out on YouTube tomorrow morning or uh, on the website, morningridepodcast.com. Hey, folks, thank you so much for uh, letting me be part of your ride. Um, Have a great weekend. Can't wait to ride with you again.